Malekith's Black Blade. I've had an affinity for this weapon since the game's release. I, I love the design, it's a colossal weapon. The weapon art makes me feel like the main protagonist of an anime. So I decided to do a challenge run with the Black Blade. I actually did two runs. The second was unfinished because Godfrey was being a chode. But also because I wasn't satisfied with the first run, considering I didn't use the weapon art all that much. So I did it all again just to see if I could find more openings and whatnot. I'll be doing my best to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how I use this weapon against every single boss in this video, as well as giving a score at the end based on its performance. I feel like I get worse over time with my intros, so let's do it. Without further ado, my name is Josh, also known as Jim Slim, and I hope you enjoy my run with Malekith's Black Blade. I started with the Prophet class because having faith in one's abilities is necessary for self-worth. I then named my character after my pronouns. Once again, Lane Legend. My drug dealer comes in clutch with an illegal weapon right at the start of the run. He also uh, dropped all of Malekith's gear for cosplay purposes, I assume, which I don't think will be possible until the very end of the run, uh, but we'll see. My first goal was to prepare for the Foreskin Noble in Volcano Manor because I can't do the skip. I tried again for hours. How do people do- I might as well bite the bullet at this point and face the boss. He drops 50,000 runes anyway. First stop was Alexander. I then paid EG a visit to upgrade my blade to plus four, followed shortly by Shabriri's Howl for a 25% boost to all damage. Now considering this is a faith-based build, I don't need the Golden Vow Ash of War. I can just get the incantation itself, which is now a 20% boost instead of 11.5 that lasts for a mighty 80 seconds. I also practiced my Lumberjacking skills for the Holy Shrouding Cracked Tier, increasing Holy Damage by 20%, and there was also the Spike Cracked Tier for a 15% boost to Charging Attacks. With that, I felt ready to take on the Foreskin Noble, in which nothing interesting happened. It was a standard fight that went smoothly. I beat him on my first try. And apparently that's where I felt like stopping my recording, because that's all I have for the setup, so let me just tell you what remains. I upgraded the sword to plus 9 and grabbed the final 3 Talismans, Ritual Sword, Axe, and Sacred Scorpion Charm, which actually wasn't that bad. I thought there would be more setup, but that's pretty much it. So with that, I decided to pay Margit a visit. Dude, come on. It's <laughs> so fun. Oh! <laughs> On my second run, ironically, I did the opposite inputs. Weapon art first, followed by the charge attack. Now since I did two runs, I'll simply include the time of my fastest attempt, which was on my second playthrough, 20 seconds. Godric the Shafted was next, uh, and he was a bit sloppy on both runs, considering I got hit in both fights. I know, I'm a disgrace to all Elden Ring players, but have you considered? The weapon art takes forever to finish. The poise you have during the attack is outstanding, but when your health is no longer than a paperclip, things can get sticky real quick. Now Godric was as follows. Two charged heavy attacks, a quick kiss, and then destined death. I thought it would be awesome to kill him as the second phase started, but that didn't happen, so I just stood there making a mockery of myself. I was pretty close though. Second playthrough. I didn't give him a chance to transform this time around, I simply sliced him with the anime of a thousand blades. This fight took me about uh, 26 seconds, I believe. And, and by the way, my time is based on when I enter the arena. If it was about the first point of contact, then yeah, it would be like 9 seconds. Radon was the usual scenario, except I was very determined this time around to kill him using the weapon art. <laughs> I was kinda close. And... nailed it! <laughs> yeah! Unfortunately, no matter how good my timing was, his death animation was too long, not to mention the cutscene afterwards, so... Uh, sad days for me, the Egyptian boy. This was an easy cleanup though, a couple of weapon arts, a slap to the face, and here we are, 50 seconds later with a dead Radon and an open sky. I sure hope nothing bad emerges from that. Ooh. With that, I went to visit Mog for an early confrontation. Ow. Yeah, I struggled a bit with this pedo demon, mostly because I haven't used a colossal weapon in a very long time, so trying to find the openings was a bit more difficult. But no more than four attempts later and he was down for the count. 
Like I said, I had to be smart because even though Colossal Weapons had the recovery reduced, it was very hard to really find a solid opening to bring the hammer down. Most of the fight was spent poking or using light attacks, but whenever he would count down, that was an easy heavy attack on his backside. That sounded weird. I, it was really easy to... Uh, on my previous attempts, I was able to stagger him before the second phase, but on my successful run, it was within the second phase where I staggered him. To me, the second phase is quite a bit tougher than the first, so I was very happy to get a good chunk out of the way before he started bleeding all over the place again. Two minutes later, and Mog was dead. I didn't fight him on my second run because I just didn't feel like it, so to compensate for that, the Feet Queen was once again on my radar, so please enjoy 47 seconds of feet simping gameplay. All right, Renal, stop. <laughs> These books are so annoying. I hate how they do like a pubic hair of health. It's so annoying. All right, time to sniff feet. Ooh, now that's some hefty damage. Nice. Not that I expected anything else, honestly. <laughs> Oh, this knocks you down too. Interesting. Goodbye. <laughs> ah. As you can see, the YouTuber known as Iguanodon has successfully sneaked his way around the Dragonic Tree Sentinel, a remarkable creature known for being a douchebag on a horse. He prepares for his ambush. Gorgonzola, to compensate for his lack of skill, buffs himself to oblivion in order to make sure that the encounter doesn't last longer than he does in bed. However, the unexpected happened. When shouting at the top of his lungs, he attracts the sentinel's attention, thus initiating the fight earlier than intended. Uh, you know, what What would I expect? Of course a, a yell would... would... Uh, I can't even think right now. Let me just kill this thing. Alright, done. I'm skipping Godfrey's Shadow Clone because it's freaking boring. Like, what do you want me to talk about? I poked him to death. Cool. <laughs> so, here's more God. Come on, goat boy. What you gonna do? Yes. Yes. And the fight's over. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Swords of Revealing Light. That's really, that's really gonna spook me there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ah, uh, I love it. It's insane to me how this works every single time. He falls for it every single time, like a loser. Now on the second playthrough, I really tried my best to use the weapon art as much as possible, but I mean, without enough health to bear through his attacks, I would die pretty consistently if I used it at, at all. What this tells me is that this weapon art is best used to tank through attacks and dish out some heavy damage at the same time. I can't find good openings 8 times out of 10 with most bosses moving forward, so I went with the old fashioned charge attacks. Up next was the limit breaker of most runs. It either dies here or continues to absolutely slap the remaining bosses. The fire giant was actually above average, I would say, because the first phase wasn't the best I've seen. That belongs to either the death poker or the Karian knight sword. Very close, but I will say that Destin Death is perhaps the best weapon art thus far that I've used when it comes to the second phase. Look at that, 7700 damage off of one weapon art plus a light attack, but you get what I'm saying, it's crazy good. Mainly because it's a fixed amount of damage, so as you drain the health it's based on like the boss's health, so it makes sense. A couple more of those and we're in the clear. Although, I was kind of scared to commit sometimes because the jank is certainly real in second phase. One minute and 30 seconds in, and the fire giant was no more. One of the best things about Destined Death is its range. It's just enough so that I can use it while standing on the pillar for the Foreskin Noble. Beautifully executed on my part. But from there, it's your standard wallet match. Don't even, don't even attempt to use the weapon art without some cover, uh, you'll die. An easy clapping of skin folds that took a mighty two and a half minutes to accomplish. Malekith was uh, a bit more, I would say, strenuous this time around. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since I used a big boy weapon against Malekith, so I had to heavily adjust to different openings. Especially since this weapon does holy damage, being patient was a, a huge struggle. However, once the second phase starts, it's a cakewalk from there. Boom. Perfect. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, sorry. Really had to burp there. <laughs> it doesn't matter. This fight, the second phase is kind of easy. Yep, 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 yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm so tempted to do that at the same time, but I know I'm gonna die without question. Come on, man. Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. I didn't think I'd get the stun there. All right, Malekith down. I'm glad I got the cosplay before him too. That was nice. <laughs> 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 oh, Alright. Godfrey, much like most weapon runs I've done, is really boring. And not that he's a boring fight altogether, he's still one of my favorite fights in the game. Which, now that I think about it, maybe I should update that list. Let me know if you want me to update my top 10 favorite bosses in Elden Ring. But my point here is that when being creative and trying to use the weapon arts, especially this one, yeah, th that's not gonna work out at all. So I'll let you sit back and enjoy this one. Why can't you do that move more often? Took me forever to get to the second phase. Jeez, dude. Oh! What a great start. Okay, cool. Sometimes he doesn't do the buff right after. Sometimes he'll do a couple of attacks. Yes! Man, what a great start. I actually have armor now, so if I get hit by one of those, I can actually survive. So many other runs, I die from one hit from anything. But I think with all this armor, with my health, I think I, I think I can survive a couple of attacks. Mm. One more, and you just gave me the opening. Goodbye. Finally, we have Radagon and the Elden Beast. This fight was very interesting, because you would think that having a huge resistance to most of my damage, holy, would be a detriment, right? Sorta. Uh, let me explain. For Rodagon, it wasn't that bad, although charging a heavy attack for 5 seconds and seeing only 1600 damage was quite depressing. But I played it out like I normally do, and the script for this fight was mostly the same. It was the Elden Beast that surprised me the most. Out of this entire run, my damage was good, but not nearly that impressive from other runs. However, in other runs, I would do so much damage for his opener that he would run away, do the Lord of the Rings move, resetting his posture meter. With this weapon, I didn't do enough damage, thus he still kept attacking me, allowing me to break his stance and get in a hefty amount of damage before the first ring attack. From there, I was able to pull off another stun, almost preventing the Elden Star's attack. But it doesn't matter, he was almost dead anyway. And there you have it folks, we beat Elden Ring with Malekith's Black Blade, and as a special treat, I went to fight Melania too. Melania, 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 yeah! This knocks you down, right? Okay, cool, it does. I, th I was wondering if I remembered that correctly or not. Ooh. Oh, mm. I knock you down again? <laughs> uh, if I had more FP, I'd do it once more, but... Man, this is a pretty good weapon art against... Ooh, why did I do that? That was kind of a dumb move on my part. Alright. Being dumb again, but this time it paid off. I've seen people dodge this attack. Dodge this attack by, like, going underneath her, which I think is pretty cool. I, I prefer my way just because I'm in front of her. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Oh, you think you can dodge that? No. <laughs> Ow, I, okay. I don't remember if, her, if she has more slashes in the second phase. I, I can't remember. I'm trying to... I don't want to get near that. I can handle the first phase, but... Ah, uh, the Shadow Clones. Why does everyone have Shadow Clones in this game? 
Stupid. Oop. Mm. Ah. Man. It's a, it's kind of like at these points where I wish I had some sort of range. I want to do I want to do like a more of a, like an incantation run. Oh wow, I was way off, but Thankfully, that paid off. That really scared me. <laughs> okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Fine. Reset. Reset, you know? Ugh. Mm hmm. Yes. Ugh. Okay, I think one more attack will do it. And you just gave it to me. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks. Man. It really is such a beautiful attack, though. Yeah! Awesome! Wow, this weapon was really good against her. So what is my consensus? Uh, there are better choices. Just straight up, there are. One of the main issues with this weapon is that it deals holy damage. Everyone and their mother in this game resists holy damage, and the ones that are weak to it aren't mandatory, or they're death birds. And we all know how I feel about that boss. The weapon art is amazing, it has great range, does crazy damage against the right bosses, and it just looks awesome. However, I would stick to a charge-based build as you can avoid more attacks this way, and when trying to find openings to effectively use the weapon art, you'll be searching for a while. I would recommend using this weapon art if you can tank attacks like nobody's business. All in all, it's a great weapon, but like I said, there are better choices. I'm gonna give it a solid 6.5 out of 10. Now, as a holy weapon, when compared to the other ones, I think it overperforms, making it a solid 9 if you ask me. Ah, but that's just what I think. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you do enjoy these runs, feel free to leave your suggestions down below. We're kinda at that point now where we really don't have that many runs to do with. I mean, I can count on my hands the weapons we realistically have left. I'm not gonna do the ones that require smithing stones, at least not all of them. The Star Fists get a pass, but like, that's about it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to become a member or subscribe to my Patreon to further support the channel, uh, you, you certainly can. You don't have to. But yeah, if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. And of course, stay safe.